Hey guys and here we are back with another video and today I've got here with me the Zixel Nash 540 which I just finished up all the testings on it and of course as usual I'll be sharing them with you. So with no further ado, let's go for it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in a few seconds. So here we are with the Zixel Quad Bay Nash Model 540, which features a dual core CPU clocked at 1.2 GHz and 1 GB of DDR3 RAM. Regarding the unboxing experience, once we open the box, we'll find a quick start guide and two extra brackets to hold the drives, two Ethernet cables, one power adapter, one power cable, which in this particular case is the US version, so we will be getting a US cable, and on my particular case, I will be using a European cable instead that we can get on any shop. Now, finally, we will also find the most important piece on this packaging, which is the NAS itself, and as we can see on the screen, it comes very well protected. And in terms of build quality, it is made of a high quality plastic all around the Nash and it features a thin layer of brushed aluminium on the front as we can see on screen, which in my opinion of course really stands out and it gives a really cool look. So at the front we will find the access to the drive base through a magnetic system, a power button on the top, 5 indication LEDs, a direct copy button that will allow us to copy from an SD card or USB drive to the NAS itself that we will test later on on this video, and finally the SD card slot and the USB 3.0 port. On both sides it has the Zixel logo, at the back a very silent 120mm fan, one power DC in, one reset button, two gigabit Ethernet ports and two USB 3.0 ports. Finally at the bottom it features four really nice rubber feet that will reduce any vibration caused by the drives. And just taking a quick look at the inside we will find a metal cage with supports that will also reduce vibration and of course the base with the SATA connections. Now, although we can use any drive with these NAS units, it is highly advisable to use NAS grade drives. And for these testings, I will be using 4 times one terabyte WD Red hard drives. And now it's time to set it up and it's really simple as you will see on screen. So we will start by removing that front cover. Next, we will remove one of the base, which as we can see on screen, it's made of plastic. So there will be no direct metal contact. Then remove those brackets that will keep the drive in place. Just place the drive and secure it with those same brackets and place back the bay into the Nash. And now all we have to do is repeat this step three more times and finally place the front cover back on and we are now ready to fire up this NAS unit. And now that we have everything working and before we begin I would like to mention that all the videos were recorded on my Windows machine but I also tested out on OS X and it works exactly the same way so regardless of the operating system you will be fine using this NAS. So I started by downloading the configuration app that we'll be using in just a few seconds and also the user guide which in this particular case has 364 pages and you guys know me usually I don't read guides but in this particular case I had to specially to get it working properly outside of my network. I would also like to mention that I had to use Zixel support for the same reasons and my feedback is that they have a great response time either by mail or by phone and if by any reason Salvador you are watching this video thanks for your help on my support ticket. So when we run the installation wizard we will be taken to the dashboard page and the first thing that we will face is the choice to configure our RAID array which we can choose as JBOD, RAID 0, 1, 5, 6 or 10 and once we select the one that we prefer just press apply and the NASH will take care of the rest. Now I'd like to mention here that the first time that we do this it will take roughly 6 hours to set up our RAID array so just leave it and go to bed and once we wake up it will be ready to use. And now that it's all ready, let's try to cover a bit more of some of the details of the dashboard. So we will find a help shortcut that has the most frequently asked questions, a status center that will give us information about the CPU and memory usage along with temperatures and fan speeds. 
And regarding the fan, I would like to share that it has a very silent operation. All you will hear is a very low hair flow sound. But one thing that I would like to see happening is the fan going completely dead when the Nash is sleeping, which doesn't happen. It always stays around 1000 RPM. We also find this storage shortcut button that will show us all the information regarding the array and the individual drives and also the option to change the RAID mode. And finally, on this screen, we will have the Zixel Cloud function that will allow us to create an account and synchronize the access to our NAS from outside of our network, which basically will create a DDNS that will point out to our NAS. Now there's also a shortcut named Playzone where we will find features as apps installation, music browser and player, photo browser and slideshow player which is actually cool for our photo collection, a video browser and player and a file browser. Finally we will have also some settings for all these features that I mentioned just now. And now let's go for the main dashboard settings which has more options and a bit more complex features. So on the system setting menu, we will have options to update the firmware and install packages like, for example, the Dropbox integration and so on, and also to change the NASH name and date and time settings. On the storage, we will have access to the information of any external drive connected, which at this moment there is none connected. Next, we will find the network settings that will allow us to change IP addresses and multi-link aggregation if we want to use that feature, port mapping for the services that we use, PPoE configuration, Tilnet or SSH access and the DNS settings. Now on the next menu, we will have the applications that will let us configure settings for the FTP server, media server, iTunes server, download service that will let us download anything from the web without having the need to have a computer on, option to select which folder we can access remotely outside of our network, connect the printer to a USB port and have it on the network so we can access from any of our computers within that network, the options for the direct copy button at the front, which we will be testing later on on the video, auto upload options for Flickr, YouTube and FTP server, Dropbox and Google Drive integration where we can upload anything to our accounts and the NAS will grab and store those files and finally enable time machine backups. The next menu is the sharing menu and in here we will find options to create and give access to users, configure groups if necessary of course, especially if we are running a small company with different work groups, we will also be able to create the necessary shares or folders as you want to call it and give public access to them or restrict to any user or group and finally the web dev settings to allow remote access to those folders. I would also like to share with you here that from all the NAS units that I've tested so far, this was the first one that actually allow us to disable the folders or the shares created by the system so that we can have everything organized our own way and only with the folders and shares that we want. And that, of course, on my opinion, it is just great. Next on the dashboard, we will have the maintenance menu that will allow us to configure power options like enabling the sleep function, which works great by the way. The only thing that I would like to see here in a future firmware update would be the fan going to sleep as well when the NASH is sleeping, which at this moment it doesn't happen. There's also a log that shows all the events that occurred on the unit, an option to save all our settings in case we need to reset the unit and don't want to waste anytime configure all settings again, the SSL configuration options and finally a shutdown and restart button. And finally we will have the backup and restore functions that we will be testing out in just a few minutes. Regarding speed tests, we are getting across all RAID configurations roughly 60 to 70 megabits per second on the writes and 100 megabits on the reads. Accessing the NAS inside of the network is very simple, just browse on Explorer or Finder and you will be able to access all your files. And to access from outside of the network, we have several options as using the Zixel Cloud address on a browser that will allow us to use the dashboard as if we were inside of our own network. Other option is to use the Dropbox or Google Drive integration, a FTP access, which is the way that I prefer, also with third-party apps like the own cloud, and finally on mobile devices with iOS or Android using the Zixel app and it will allow us to browse and playback, pictures, music, videos and other documents and the option to upload any file to the NASH. 
Now, in terms of backups, one of the options that we have is to make a backup from the SD card or USB drive on the front panel. And for that, all we need to do is to configure which folder we want as a destination for those backups. And after that, every time that we insert an SD card or a USB drive and press that direct copy button, the NAS will make a copy to a folder with a date and timestamp. So even if we press the button more than once, it will not overwrite the previous file. Now we can also back up the NAS to a USB drive and for those settings I'm using an external SSD as you can see on screen. Now all we need to do is to create the backup job and tell the NAS which folders we want to back up, the destination and that is it. I would also like to highlight here that we can schedule those USB backups so that the NAS can do it on a daily, weekly or monthly basis and we can just relax and forget about those backups. And one other detail detail that I would like to share here is that those backups are stored as .dar files so if we want to restore we will have to access the restore function on the NAS and in here honestly I would like to see an option to keep the original file structure so instead of having to restore the files we could just browse those files. Finally we will also have the option to backup to another NAS and the process is exactly the same as we did on the USB. The only difference is that we need to give SSH permission on the destination NAS, which the one that I used successfully on these testings was my WDEX2. So in conclusion, guys, things that I did like the most were the overall design and build quality of this NAS, the silent operation, the ability to remove the folders created by the system, the performance especially on the read speeds, and finally, the schedule options on the USB backups. On the other hand, things that I did like the less were the access to the NAS outside of the network could be easier, the fan should be completely dead when the NAS is sleeping, and backups stored as the .dar files, all of which can be improved either on firmware updates or software implementation and if that happens in the future, I will let you guys know right over here. And that is it regarding this overview. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget that thumbs up over there. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.